Americans have given up on privacy. Macs have an awesome firmware vulnerability. Hacker One brokers bounties for security flaws. Microsoft answers BitLocker questions and more. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Happy Monday, people. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for June 8th, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedoms. Giant piles of perky news this morning, so let's fire it up. Did I say perky? I lied. CNET's Chris Matichek found a particularly depressing read about Americans and their opinions on privacy. Put out by the University of Pennsylvania's Annenberg School for Communication, the trade-off fallacy is an interesting read. And I gotta say, Matichek found pretty much the best quote. Our findings support a new explanation. A majority of Americans are resigned to giving up their data, and that is why many appear to be engaged in trade-offs. Trade-offs? Well, you know, like giving up your information for access to friends on social services. Trade-offs for discounts, deals we pretty much don't think are worth what we give up for them. The study isn't perfect, they never are, but it's revealing when, say, 69% of a fairly broad group doesn't realize that, say, your pharmacy doesn't need your permission to sell off information about what over-the-counter drugs you buy, or that the word privacy policy, or the phrase, I guess, means your info is actually private? No, it actually means, well, it's a detailed discussion of what the company feels entitled to do with your information. Privacy policy doesn't mean privacy. Privacy policy is where they tell you what you're gonna do with your information, or what they're gonna do with it. In any case, it's a good read. Go find the article on CNET, and then go read the report. Stop letting your Mac go to sleep? Probably not a bad idea. OS 10 security researcher Pedro Viaca says Mac ship before mid-2014, well, the ones that are allowed to go to sleep, which I'd venture is probably almost all of them, are vulnerable to an EFI attack that, quote, can overwrite the contents of your BIOS from userland and rootkit EFI without any other trick other than a suspend resume cycle, a kernel extension, flash ROM, and root access, end quote. Sound vague? Not to people that might maybe want to rootkit your OS X machine and get nasty. Viaka suggests you email Apple and demand firmware security fixes for this bug and others to be presented at DEF CON 23, presentation known as Thunderstrike 2 Sith Strike. Yeah, we're going to have more news on this in August. Uh, we're all going to be at DEF CON, the 6th to the 9th, working the Hack 5 table, selling pineapples, sitting in on presentations, and quite a bit more. Michelle Prinz and Yobra Abma, the crew behind the Hack 100, have a new startup called Hacker One. Hack 100, if you don't know, was their list of 100 tech companies they would try to hack. They found a lot of holes, reported them to companies, and hey, Nicole Perlroth reports in this New York Times article at least a third of the companies they contacted actually raced to solve their issues. Two-thirds of the flaws, though, were pretty much ignored, which brings us to Hacker One, a venture capital-backed company that aims to broker a relationship between companies and the hackers that find flaws in their security by offering bounties. ProRoth reports that Hacker One will get a 20% commission and that they already have relationships with Yahoo, Square, and Twitter, and some companies you might never expect, like banks and oil companies, to work with their service. Now, I'm curious, can this turn the corner on security researchers offering zero-day exploits to the highest bidder? I'd be happy to know more folks were getting bugs fixed by the companies with the problem rather than, say, selling them to organized crime or the NSA. Most companies, though, Apple, the article notes, pay nothing for bugs that can go for hundreds of thousands of dollars on the black market. This is a problem that ain't going away soon. Go read the article on the New York Times. Microsoft's BitLocker is the easiest way to encrypt Windows drives, period. It's built right in. But is it really secure? Michael Lee has written a great write-up on The Intercept that brings Microsoft's answers to questions about BitLocker. Are the encryption keys compromised by default? Why was the Elephant Diffuser removed? How close is Microsoft's relationship with law enforcement and the NSA? And why did full disk encryption get really hard to use after Windows 8? He's also got some great advice from Bruce Schneier, who recommends best crypt for Windows users. Ton of good stuff in this write-up. Head over to first Firstlook.org and read it. We got links in the show notes. So that's my Monday in security and privacy. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who's helped us relaunch the show and especially the folks that are supporting us on Patreon. If you find value from this show and you can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We need your support there to help us keep this coming independently and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, and a subscribe goes quite a long way, too. Shannon Morris, Darren Kitchen, and I will be back all this week as we attempt to reach our next milestone goal. So I hope you'll contribute to keeping ThreatWire independent and ad-free. Thanks again for your likes and subscribes. I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the Internet.